I get asked all the time, how to identify cappuccinos? And I see a lot of confusion in the hobby about how to identify cappuccinos. So today we're gonna to be going over how to identify a cappuccino from a normal gecko, as well as going over a frappuccino versus a lily white. I'm gonna be saying normals a lot in this video. Crested geckos are polymorphic originally, which means that they have many different phenotypes in the wild. There isn't necessarily a normal crested gecko, like say a knobtail gecko, a leopard gecko, or a ball python, where those species have definitive normals because that's what nature deemed was fit for survival. In the case of crested geckos on New Caledonia, with limited predators meant that many different variations of pattern and color could still live and thrive and reproduce in the wild. So that's why with crested geckos, when we imported them originally, we saw a great variety in their color and pattern, unlike with most other species. The cappuccino gene seems to really enhance oranges and change the hue a little bit of orange and red, while most importantly, it adds a lot of melanin to the animal. In the early days of identifying cappuccinos, a lot of the hobby would go off looking for a V at the base of the tail. I'm starting to notice that nowadays, very few cappuccinos still have that V at the base of the tail. Luckily, there are a couple of key visual markers to help identify a cappuccino from a normal gecko. So if you look at a normal hatchling, you're gonna notice that beigeous yellow tail, and it's not going to be anything that really strikes you as out of the ordinary. While when you look at a cappuccino hatchling, the tail is immediately going to catch your attention. The base is gonna be that pure white, and it should lead down to a at least darker tip of the tail, and oftentimes it'll almost turn black towards the end. Other visual markers would be that there's an overall color shift. While this is hard to describe in words, I hope that the camera can capture it for you guys. Oranges are a different color, reds are a different color. It's still red and still orange on that spectrum, but it shifts the overall color palette over quite a lot. The cappuccino gene can be added to all of these different projects that we already have in the hobby at the moment, and it can enhance them and add melanin, add in that contrast, and really crank up that saturation and color for oranges and reds. And a nice little byproduct of adding in that color and the contrast is that it makes the whites pop out even more. Now, when it comes to identifying a frappuccino, it's gonna follow a similar trend. Usually with lily whites, when they first hatch out, they tend to be a little yellow, kind of not very bright white when they first hatch out. And the frappuccino is gonna follow suit with the cappuccino. The frappuccinos, when they first hatch out of the egg, are a stark paper white. All of that lily patterning is super white, beautiful. I'm sure that the tangerine gene could influence that, as I've noticed with cappuccinos, when I've paired tangerines to caps, tangerine does tend to really influence that original marker for a cappuccino. Oftentimes I've seen it turn the base of the tail into almost a red or a almost bright orange and sometimes really just, just different looking. But luckily with the more subtle identifier of the overall color shifting, that's an easier way to identify a cappuccino. For example, this triple X cappuccino that I made from pairing Solomon Doors to my female cappuccino doesn't have the brightest white base of the tail, but the rest of it is pretty dark on that tail, where in a normal cappuccino baby, there would be a bright white base of the tail. In this offspring in particular, it was barely even white and it was much more orange and red looking. But you can still tell by looking at the big picture that this gecko is not a normal, it is a cappuccino. This is an incredibly unique gecko that I've made and that's why I'm holding it back. But you can see how the cappuccino gene has so much potential to alter the projects that we currently have an understanding of. Now, when it comes to identifying cappuccinos and frappuccinos as adults, it gets a little bit more nuanced and subtle for cappuccinos. I've seen some cappuccinos that kind of look like your mundane gecko. What ends up happening in the development though with a cappuccino, most of the time, if it has some sort of dashed or full pinstriping, that pinstripe is going to bleed out onto the body a little bit. It's gonna look more cloudy and foamy as opposed to a straight, you know, strict pinstripe. So that's one way that it helps me identify a cappuccino as an adult, if you didn't know beforehand or see it hatch. But then also I've seen a lot of cappuccinos as they develop into adulthood, that white pinstriping ends up turning neon green or neon yellow. So it seems that the cappuccino gene has a very wide spectrum for how it can express, which doesn't make it any easier on us. And that's kind of what led to a lot of confusion when the cappuccino gene first was introduced to the hobby, at least to the masses, is that a lot of people just saw a brown gecko. And while there are plenty of low quality, barely any pattern brown cappuccinos, there's also 
plenty of very incredible specimens that the hobby is now creating because go figure if you pair a new gene to a really nice animal instead of any random gecko you can get your hands on you tend to have the better outcome in offspring when it comes to frappuccinos the frappuccino kind of takes how the cappuccino has such a spectrum of development frappuccino dials that up to 11. I have one Frappuccino where the lily patterning is neon yellow, and then I have one where it literally looks neon green. And then I've seen others that keep a nice, perfect white. I do have one gecko that I've made that was from a tangerine lily white to a cappuccino, and I still don't really know what it is. I've asked a couple of people, and I've gotten answers on both sides. Just a lily, it's a frap for sure. It looks maybe it's a lily, maybe it's a frap. I still can't tell, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this back, I'm going to grow it up, and then I'm going to pair it, and then I'm going to see what the offspring are. Because then, if it makes a baby that has that pure white base of the tail and the black tip, then with confidence I can say it's a Frappuccino. But if you still are a little confused, you can always still feel free to reach out to me or other breeders that are working with the gene. If you need to, just skip back to earlier in the video to see those visual markers and see the side-by-sides that I put up for you guys.